It is lunchtime again, and I have another low-carb, ketogenic meal for you. Today, it will be summer sausage stew, but this will have a twist on it. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to give credit to the person who inspired me to make this meal again, Joe Mobley over at Savage Citizen, formerly Feral Woodcraft. Joe made a recipe a few years ago that he called Summer Sausage Stew, and basically that's the recipe I'm using today. But of course, I'll be changing it up to meet my own needs, requirements, tastes, whatever you like. So what is Summer Sausage Stew? It is exactly what the name implies. It is a stew made with summer sausage and, of course, vegetables and some other ingredients. But what is it that makes this one unique and different from other things, at least that I've done out here in the woods? Well, for some time now, I've been looking for ways to make low-carb or ketogenic meals that are both lightweight, shelf-stable, meaning requiring no refrigeration, yet are very calorie-dense. And I found that that's not easy. There is about one that I know of, a uh, manufacturer of freeze-dried ketogenic meals on the market, and I have yet to purchase any, and I likely will to do some reviews for you, but I wanted to see what I could come up with on my own. Now, what's the issue? Why is that a problem? Well, it's not the vegetables. The vegetables are easy enough because I, as you'll see, I dehydrated quite a few of them at home. Well, everything that you're going to see today, I dehydrated at home, and we'll talk more about that. But it is adding the protein and the fat, and that's what is challenging for a meal like this. Now, protein's not too hard for any meal because, of course, jerky or dried uh, hamburg as gravel, all those things add uh, all the protein that you're going to need to a meal. It is more about adding the fats. And as you would know, if you're on the ketogenic meal or follow a low-carb diet, it's all about getting enough fat in your diet. And the problem with adding fat to a meal is a couple of things. It doesn't keep well out in the woods. Most fats don't. And I'll talk about that as I show you the ingredients for this meal. Fats don't keep well. They have a tendency to go rancid and they weigh a lot. So those two things alone kind of work against having a lightweight, shelf-stable, requiring no refrigeration type of a meal. But there are some things that you can use that will add the fats as well as the flavor to a meal that will be shelf-stable, not requiring refrigeration, and light enough weight to meet most people's requirements for a lightweight meal. What are those ingredients? When I take you down to my prep surface, we'll put this meal together, we'll get it on the fire, we'll cook it up, we'll do a taste test, and we'll have a few more words. So obviously before we get the stew started, I need to have a fire in my wood stove. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. This is a true joy for me because it's been a long, dry, hot summer. There's been a fire ban all summer and now we're into the middle of October. And I once again can have fires in my, well, in the fire pit if I want or in my wood stove as I'm going to do today. So this is just an exercise in uh, enjoyment, if you will, to be able to build a fire. So let's get that started. And I might as well show you this one. I'm at it. This is a new knife I'm testing. This is the first time I've had it in the woods today. This is the Bison by a company out of China known as QSP. It is made of a D2 steel. There's not much I can say about it yet. Uh, what I can say is that I'm enjoying it, but it has some uh, handicaps. We'll talk about it at the later time. One of those handicaps is the spine is rounded off very comfortable on the fingers when you're carving, but not very good for striking a ferrocerium rod. I'll probably modify that at some point in the future. So I have my Leatherman that I can use the back of the saw to do that. So let's scrape up a little bit of birch bark. I literally picked this up off the forest floor. I have some other lighter stuff here and I could have used that, but I decided to do it in a way that people often like to see done, which is scraped up birch bark into some powder, get that started, and then we'll go from there. Put that knife away, dig up my ferrocerium rod, and since this hasn't been used in quite a while, I'm going to have to strike off some of the darker portions of it, the oxidation that occurs. Yeah, I'd say that's working pretty good. Let's see if we can get a little few sparks into this pile. Lights up nice and quick. Now, the first part of this you're not going to get to see because uh, the stove is out of uh, view, but I'll switch over to that as quickly as I can. Let's throw another piece in. All right. 
put that out. Now I'm going to throw in a few small sticks, but I'll switch over the camera view so you can see the rest of what I'm doing. All right, so all, all I have done is just switch the camera view. I have a few splits. Let me see, what do I have? A uh, couple pieces of pine. Those are pine twigs off a branch that uh, came down in some recent wind. So this is not even something I had to go look for to harvest. It was literally laying right here by my sight from the pine trees all around me. I just cut some of it down, cut it up, it's dry. And that'll take a second, of course. Uh, now that won't be my cooking fire because pine is so smoky, as you can see, it's taken off now with a little bit of smoke. So what do I have? I have a, another branch of maple that I just cut down and split. And I used the new bison to do the batoning through and uh, it worked fine. You know, it's, it, you, can, you can baton with just about any knife, but uh, you know, it worked fine for doing this. So let's throw a few pieces in, some smaller quarter splits. Now, I'm doing this now so that I can get to work on assembling the stew because I don't want this as a raging fire when it comes time to put the pot on. I want to have a low fire with some good coals, which is what I will get with the maple because I don't want so much heat that it's going to... Uh, burn the contents. I think that's probably good. All right, I'm going to reposition the camera and we're going to put this stew together so we can get it in the pot and on the fire. All right, the fire is taking off well. Let's get this stew put together. So I did say that this was a dehydrated meal that I had made at home, yet I do have some summer sausage and something else that I will we'll add to the meal, I'll show you in a meal in a minute. But uh, the whole point was is to create a lightweight or as lightweight as reasonably could be, uh, easy to prepare, and it's something that does not require refrigeration. So the vegetables are obvious, but let's put it together. So what I wanted to show you is the meal itself. Well, not the entire meal, but these are my dehydrated items. So this is my full stew. Now this is gonna be a good sized meal, but I will show you in the bowl what I have here, but these are all vegetables that I dehydrated at home. Uh, just, you know, what it was is, um, as vegetables got to the end of their useful life in the fridge, uh, I just took them out and dehydrated them before they went bad. So uh, yeah, it's a great way of saving some uh, uh, vegetables from throwing them out. And I wanted to share with you what the weight of this meal is. So this is five, or sorry, 1.8 ounces or 52 grams. Now this is not the entire meal because of course I have summer sausage and another ingredient that I want to share with you. But this is all the vegetables coming in at 1.8 ounces. That's pretty good. All right, let me open it up and I'll share with you what's inside the bag. Uh, since it is a stew, I do have a, a beef bouillon, an OXO beef bouillon, and I, for whatever reason, this one is a less salt version. I'm not concerned about salt being on the ketogenic diet, but some people may be, so it is available. This will also add to the stock. This is dehydrated tomato sauce. Very easy to do. We can talk about that at some other point. But I went with a can of tomatoes, diced tomatoes, rather than starting with some type of a sauce and then dehydrating them. Reason being, all the commercial sauces have sugar at it. Canned tomatoes, be careful now, you have to look at the label, but canned tomatoes usually do not. So I pureed them, simmered them down, and when it was thick enough to use with my dehydrator, that's what I came up with. So that'll also be part of the base stock. And I will put the ingredients in my bowl because I think that's going to be the easiest way to share this with you. Let's see. Hopefully this is coming up. So, uh, Rutabaga or turnip could be either one, but in this case it is rutabaga. This, this is shredded, and that's the easiest way to do this for dehydrating and for rehydrating is to shred the vegetables so that they uh, they'll you know lose or give up their moisture quickly and regain the moisture. There is broccoli, carrots, red pepper, and I think I've got some green pepper in here. Yes, green pepper. There's some green peppers. Uh, Onions, there's some dehydrated onions, mushrooms. Yeah, all the things that were in my fridge, basically, that I just took and dehydrated and added together. Uh, this will probably at least double in size, maybe even more so. Oh, yeah, there's some peas in there as well. And uh, yeah, so what we'll do is we're going to, as soon as I get the water on and get it hot, I'll get this started. Now, let's talk about some options here. 
uh, before I show you the other ingredients. So I'm going to be putting this directly into the water, the cold water, in my pot and putting it on the fire. Another way I could have done this, if you're fuel conscious to the point where you're using alcohol and you don't want to waste fuel, is put it in cold water and just leave it. Leave it all day, a couple of hours, whatever you want. It'll pretty much totally rehydrate just sitting in the cold water. It will rehydrate a little, fa little faster with the heat, but if you do it in a cold soak, as it's called, and then put it on the heat, the time that you have it over the heat is very minimal. But I'm going to be putting this in cold water and uh, then adding to that. So let's bring the kettle over. I'm going to put this down because the kettle is dirty. All right. I am going to start with my tomato sauce. I want you to see this. Can you see the tomato sauce here? It is just flaky. It just crumbles. A little bit of leathery to this to it, but that's uh, what you want, just a little bit. The more moisture you get out, the longer it will last. I'm going to add in my beef bouillon. And all right, so there is my oxo cube, the beef bouillon. Let's give that a little bit of a stir. Already the tomato is rehydrating even though it's in cold water, but it'll do better once we get it on the heat. And I'll put in my vegetables. And then we're going to put this on the heat to get started and then I'll show you the rest of the ingredients. Give that a stir. Do you know I have about a cup and a half of water in here. I may end up having to add a little bit more water when the time this rehydrates. Uh, uh, we'll see. Okay, let's get that on the heat. All right, the 12 centimeter zebra belly pot is sitting on the stove and it's starting to warm up the water, rehydrate the vegetables. Time to add the rest of the ingredients. Now, the next ingredient does not need refrigeration and it doesn't need rehydration either, although it will get a little softer once I put it in the warm water. So, basically, what is it? Summer sausage, hence the name. So this is a brand of summer sausage we have here, Schneider's. I think most people were able to get their hands on this. I picked this up in the grocery store. I was actually able to pick it up with a $5 off coupon uh, because it was becoming to the end of its expected life and, uh, date. Uh, but here's the thing about summer sausage. Summer sausage is very traditional. It's been made for a long time, many, many years. And the reason it was made was that it would withstand the heat of the summertime without refrigeration and without going bad. So it is a quite a dry sausage, but it retains most of its fat. And as long as you don't, uh, you know, subject to too much heat, it's not going to go bad. So it has been secured in this package and, uh, uh, you know, it won't even start to go bad until uh, I open the package up. But I'm opening the package up today and I, I'm sure that I've got at least a month of unrefrigerated uh, keeping for, of this sausage. So we're going to talk a little bit about this in a minute, but let me get this open and start to cut it up. So once again, let's bring out the knife. And so inside of the pack, as you can see, the summer sausage is once again sealed up. So I need to take that out of there. And one thing I failed to do today was to bring a cutting board. What was I thinking? I need something to cut on. So I'm going to use this package. And I'm going to use half of the sausage for this meal. So let's talk about nutrition as I do this. Let me put the rest of that one back a little bit. So, this is probably the most heavy item in the meal today, or heavy in terms of weight for carrying, but it is also the most calorie dense of uh, all the ingredients that I'll be putting in. So this package, this piece of summer sausage is a half a pound or 225 grams. Now, the nutrition value on the back of the package lists 100 grams so not quite half of this, as being 420 calories, which means if I was to put the whole summer sausage in, I'd be getting upwards 900 to 1,000 calories. That's a huge amount of calories in a small amount of packaging, especially when most of that is coming from fat. So it is 33 grams of fat, 28 grams of protein, 
zero grams of carb, oh, sorry, one gram of carbohydrates, but zero coming from sugar. So it's such a small amount, they're not even showing you what it is. There are some ingredients and it does list sugar in this, but to be honest, if it's listing zero grams of sugar in half this package, even if it was one gram in this whole package, um, that's within acceptable for me. So let's just cut this up. I think I'll start by splitting it down. And I'm gonna end up quartering it and then slicing it. The package I'm cutting it on is the other ingredient that's not a secret ingredient, but I just want to wait to share it with you. So there's... Cut down. Now I'm going to slice that up and put it in the bowl, and then we'll get that all transferred into the pot in a second. And then I'll show you the last of the ingredients. All right, so I think I'll eat one of these. Mm, yep. Mm. They are a little salty, but with the ketogenic diet, you do need to be sure that you get enough salt in your diet. So I don't mind having a little bit of extra salt in this meat. All right, so we're gonna get that in in a minute. But let me share with you the last of the ingredients. Moon cheese. Freeze-dried cheese. This is pepper jack. And uh, so it's going to be a little bit spicier. What a cool thing. Now, there are a number of different brands of freeze-dried cheese. Moon cheese, I think, it may be one of the more recognized uh, brands, but there are other ones as well. And let me read you the nutrition on this one. So... This is sold as a snack instead of a chips or something like that. Great thing for somebody on a low-carb ketogenic diet. For one full package, it would be 350 calories. So I am uh, actually have about half a package here because I, I dug into them and been snacking on them recently. But for that full package, 28 grams of that would be from fat. So we're getting about 14 grams of fat in all of this. There is, where is my proteins? 21 grams of protein because of it is cheese, and uh, zero grams of carbohydrates. Once again, how do you beat that? Okay, so I'm going to add those in in a minute. Now, I do have another ingredient that I'm adding for me, not because it needs it, but because I just wanted to, and it's basically it's bone broth and collagen powder added here in this little bit of package. Totally optional. It just increases both the flavor and some of the nutrient value of the meal. You don't have to add this at all to, to this recipe. Again, it's, this is just a personal choice. All right, let's reposition the camera. We'll put the pot on and we'll add the rest of these ingredients. All right, there's steam coming from the pot. Should come up with some better way of taking this lid off, but I just wanted to kind of get this going. Oh yeah, yeah, it's cooking hot, fast and hot. Hopefully it's not sticking. Nope. Well, looks good. I will be showing you, of course, what it looks like once it's fully rehydrated, and that is mostly rehydrated right now. And it smells wonderful. All right, let's get the rest of the ingredients in. So here comes my uh, summer sausage. Half of the pa half of that. So what, a quarter pound of summer, summer sausage, except for, of course, the piece I ate. And I haven't shown you the moon cheese yet, so let's open up the moon cheese. We'll throw a few of those in. And it's getting a little hot here, but fire will die down again. I had to throw a few pieces of wood in, of course. May not add all of the cheese. Not necessary. So here's what the moon cheese looks like. It's just little puffed cheese. That's all it is. Mm, oh, that's tasty. Pepper jack cheese, but this is jalapeno pepper jack cheese. So let's put in, what have I got here? Just a small handful. And they will rehydrate, get a little chewy. Oh, oh keep moving, keep moving. I may even have to take that off and let it sit to the heat. I think I will until the... Uh, fire dies down a little bit, and I may have to add just a tiny bit more water. 
So this was as much an experiment as it was anything else because it uh, is not something I've done before in the woods. Again, this is all new and great. Well, I've made stews before, but not one with summer sausage. And I probably misjudged the amount of water compared to the vegetables. In other words, I could have got away with a fewer vegetables in this. Let me see if I can position the camera just down a little bit so you can see what the stew is looking like at this point. I'm going to add in the bone broth and collagen and stir that around. That is going to really thicken things up, so I may well add a little bit of more water to this. It also turns it into like a gravy. And do you know what I haven't done is I haven't added any spices to this. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of, well, I don't think heat will be necessary. Maybe a little bit of garlic. I don't think I need to add salt because the sausage has a lot of salt in it. But with this sitting right next to the stove, I think probably it'll keep warm enough that I can just let it stay there and kind of stew for a little while and rehydrate. And when that is ready, we'll uh, set up for a taste test. All right, let's have a look here. Oh, it's a little hot. Uh, no, it's a lot hot. That's, that's be accurate here. This is still a lot hot, even though I've taken it off the burner for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. It's still very hot. I don't know if you can see the steam rising off of that, but it's still very hot. So my misgivings about uh, having not enough water or having too much vegetables, uh, it, it came out looking pretty good. It's not uh, dried out. It's not so thick that, that I have to be concerned. In truth, well, let's just do the taste test and everything else, and we'll talk about what I might do differently, some of the options we could have done, and what I might do differently in the future. But before I even do the taste test, we have to give you a bit of a close-up. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, so yeah, we're in focus. You can see the vegetables have all rehydrated. Piece of the summer sausage. The cheese has melted. I'm not seeing, oh yeah, there is a little bit of gooiness from the cheese added there, which is, you know, pretty much what you're looking for. Let's see, my end frame, not quite. All right. All right, the light needs to pick me back up again, or the camera needs to pick up my face again, but it will. There we go. All right, that's a bit better. All right, let's do the taste test. I have a piece of the sausage and some vegetables. Mm. Obviously, I got a piece of summer sausage in that first spoonful. So, um, I said a minute ago that I had not done be this before. That's not entirely true. I did this at home because I wanted to see <laughs> how it would come together, but I did it on top. No, actually, I did it over an alcohol stove. I was thinking I did it on the stove top, but no, actually, I did it over an alcohol stove at home. But this is the first time I've done it in the woods over a fire. And it's always a little trickier. Anyone who cooks over a fire knows to regulate the heat, all that type of thing. There was no sticking in the pan, which is very important. No burning. And uh, it was on for a long enough period of time. So from that first mouthful, what can I tell you? Uh, the sausage softens up. I've eaten this sausage. We cut it up at home. We put it on a board with some cheese. It's a great snack. It can be a meal. But in this case, it rehydrated a little bit, so it got a little softer, and it's, it's not hard and chewy. It's just nice, just what you would want from it. The vegetables are all rehydrated. They are virtually the same size they were before I put them on the dehydrator. So once again, worked out well. The OXO cube, or not cube, but in this case, the OXO powder combined with the dehydrated tomato sauce, homemade tomato sauce at that, uh, gives it a nice flavor in the stock. And of course, I did add for me the bone broth and uh, collagen powders for the added nutrition. Again, uh, you don't have to. If you're interested in knowing more about those, we'll talk about those again in a later video, but look up bone broth and collagen powder and you'll see why I thought it was a good match to add to this. Wasn't so much to replace anything, it was just to add and enhance, well, both flavor, texture, and uh, uh, health or nutrition. Let me get a little bite of this. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so let's talk about what I did, what I would do again, what I would do differently. So the first thing, let's just talk about the summer sausage. I would like to make my own summer sausage so that I know what ingredients are in it. Now I looked at the package, there's nothing there that I, that I was concerned about. I know people will say nitrites and nitrates, which yes, there's, there's reason to be concerned, but again, it is not the poison that a lot of people think it is. We can talk more about that again at a later time. But what I might do uh, for the next time out is determine exactly how much summer sausage I'm likely to add to a meal, cut it to that point, and then vacuum seal it at home so that it remains fresh and probably keep it in the freezer until I'm ready to go out. But uh, yeah, so very oily, very dense with nutrients, and but very stable without refrigeration. And that's what you want from a good fat and a good protein. The freeze-dried cheese. I'd probably put the whole package in. The flavor it adds was great. The amount of calories it adds in terms of fat and protein was great. It did go a little cheesy like you want or a little stringy with cheese. Not a lot because I didn't put that much in. Had I put more in, uh, I would have had more of that. Freeze-dried cheese is a great trail food for those of us on a ketogenic or a low-carb diet. The vegetables. I could have cut them in larger chunks like you might get in a stew, you know, something half inch cubed or whatever. But having done this with a shredder at home and just shredded them up or cut the peppers and everything just very fine and like long, not shoestrings, but you know, long thin pieces, allowed them to rehydrate fully. So there's no chewiness, no uh, uh, chunkiness or, you know, overdoneness to them. They all came out ideal at the same time. Hmm. I think those would be the only changes, and not really changes, just comments on what I did here. It is not overly salty. Wow. Okay. So this was another low-carb ketogenic meal that I have been adapting from other meals to bring out into the woods and share with you. I have been promising that I will do a video specifically on what it means to have a low carb or ketogenic lifestyle, and especially from the food you eat. Why you might want to do this, why as a woods person or bushcrafter or hiker, you may want to look at this as well, because there's a very specific application for us who go out to the woods, that there's some benefits that are unseen or unthought of by most other people. So we'll do that in a separate video. I am always looking for ideas. If you have ideas of things that I can try and convert into a meal that works out here, something simple, something nutritious, something that we would all enjoy, uh, please put those in the comments section below. Again, I want to give credit to Joe Mobley over at Savage Citizen for the inspiration for this meal. Joe's was similar and different at the same time. I added a few things, did a few things differently. But otherwise, it wasn't that much different from what Joe did. I can understand why he enjoys making this uh, so much. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good, high-nutrition meal. I may make it a little smaller next, next time because this is approaching 1,000 calories, which is a good-sized meal, but half of my daily intake, so I still have supper to go. And, uh, yeah, that should be about right. Yeah, that's actually good. Maybe I would keep it the same size. All right, if you have any comments or any question about today's videos or any of the videos that I have been doing on the ketogenic low-carb lifestyle, please put them in the comments section below. If you have any suggestions, put those in the comments section below. Let me know if you're going to give this a try or something similar to it. I'd be interested. If you have recipes, as I mentioned, share them with the rest of us. And if I can make them, I'll bring them out. And then, of course, give credit to it, whoever gave me those recipes. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.